Once again, an almost near flawless plan. You've got a spring attached to a rock, boxing glove, and you do work on that spring, and you do work to compress it. Now the work when you uh, push on a spring is, is kind of tricky. In fact, the force you apply changes with distance. You push on a little bit of the, the spring a little bit, uh, and you move it a little bit, and it doesn't really take that much work. Very little force to push it a little bit. But as you push it further and further, it takes more and more force. So the amount of force goes up. So you can say that the work is equal to the average force times the distance it's moving. And that certainly would be true. But uh, work on a spring is uh, equal to uh, um, a little bit trickier equation, which I don't want to deal with right at this second. Simply to say that uh, you do work on the spring. And when you do work on the spring, uh, let's make up a number. Let's say we do 500 joules of work. And then we store it. It has 500 joules of potential energy stored in it. And when you release the spring, it can do 500 joules of kinetic energy. Now in, in normal physics, there's a, a rule of conservation of momentum that, uh, that talks about the way the, the boxing glove is supposed to move and the way the, the stone is supposed to move. But keep in mind, this is coyote physics, and, and physics conspires against the coyote. So the object begins moving with some kinetic energy, which means it's going to have some velocity. And uh, the velocity of that spring will be, uh, and, and the stone can be calculated if you use this equation. Obviously, it's a much greater mass, so it should have uh, not so much velocity, but, uh, but the, the math seems to change for the coyote, and it helps the roadrunner. Sorry.